Hello drummers, it's Rob Licken here from drumstheword.com. Welcome to this free mini song lesson, but today I'm going to show you how to play the song Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry, drummed by Fred Below. Three great, three great names there, Johnny Be Good, Chuck Berry and Fred Below. And I've got the free PDF you can download from my website, you'll find a link beneath this video. So have this page printed out in front of you as we go through this together. It's going to make things a lot easier for you to understand. And what I've got for you in this lesson are basically the three main variations of the drum beat that uh, Fred plays throughout the song. I've got the intro for you, the two great band stab sections, and then the outro as well. So in combination, all these things will help you to play the entire song. I'll also talk about at the end of this lesson how you become an online member over the website. You get access to over 600 full video song lessons, but we'll talk more about that at the end of the lesson. So, 172 BPM, although it does vary a little bit in the song, um, it was hard to, to sort of pinpoint one specific tempo, uh, as it, like I say, it does vary, but 172 seemed to, to match up with most of the song. And the first part of the chart here at the top, I've got three bars for you showing you the three main drum beats that Fred plays throughout the song, uh, basically focusing on what the right hand on the right cymbal is doing. That, that's where the most of the variation happens. Uh, and with these three drum beats, you can play the entire song, but he does improvise a lot and change them up a little bit, as we're going to see in the next section when we look at the, the first six bars of the intro. So our first drum beat, very, very basic. We're going to be playing bass drum on one, snare drum on two, and at the same time, we're going to be stepping the hi-hat on beats two and four. Classic sort of jazz idea, this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two. Simply, we'll focus on playing quarter notes up on the right cymbal. And Fred does play this um, um, in the song, it's just he doesn't keep it up for very long. He's always throwing in these extra little swing notes. Now before going to the next example, I just want to talk about the bass drum also. Uh, I managed to find an isolated drum track, really, really bad quality, but at least I was able to hear some of the bass drum patterns, I think, um, that, that Fred plays. He does play one, two, three, four, in parts of the song, but then also I think he plays this, where he's playing the bass drum on all four beats. And it's called feathering the bass drum, where I'm, I'm just lightly tapping the bass drum. I'm not, I'm just feathering it. In fact, that could be, that could be even lighter just by tapping it like that, but you probably won't hear it very well on this electric kit. Uh, the point is that he could also be playing the bass drum on all four beats. So if you actually prefer to do that, and I think some, some parts of the song, especially after the, the, the band stab sections, where he's playing one, two, three, four on the bass drum anyway, the last bars we see, continuing that helps to maintain the groove. So feel free to improvise with the bass drum as well, playing it on all four beats and just on beats one and three. But for this um, notation, I've decided just to play it on beats one and three. Very, very hard to hear. In fact, I'd say almost impossible unless you find a really clear isolated track to hear exactly what the bass drum's doing. Anyway, enough of that. So, second bar is our classic jazz pattern. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four. Now, um, talking about the swing aspects, because the tempo's so fast, it's very hard to be able to distinguish between a sort of a flatter swing and a more of a swung swing. Um, the tempo is going by so fast that e even if you were playing it as a, as a, as a, as a normal, e evenly spaced shuffle, it would still sound like that. So um, don't worry too much about the feel, though you've certainly got the song to listen to many, many times to sort of help you get that feel. But it's really just an up-tempo swing. There's nothing, there's nothing sort of quasi going on there, really. Um, but it, it's always hard to replicate another drummer's swing feel, shuffle feel. Very, very hard to replicate the greats. But anyway, I'll have a go at it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Classic jazz. The final drum beat is the uh, where you're shuffling every single beat and it's the shuffle. So we're just playing one and two and three and four. It's hardest to play up to speed. It's obviously the tempo. So Fred doesn't play the shuffle, the full version of the shuffle very often, but what he does is he improvises between the three. So 
have fun with those three drum beats and be aware that not one of them is played all the way through the song. There are variations that occur. And if you want to sort of play around with that, then you can have a lot of fun with it. So let's, before we go to the next section, let me now play for you those three drum beats up to speed, say four times each. Here we go. So now we can take a look at the actual drum parts in the song. And it starts off with the guitar intro and Fred comes in with this little drum, snare drum, drum fill. Snare drum and I think bass drum at the same time on beat one, one, but it's preceded by a little drag. I'm playing two little left notes, followed by the main accented right note. So the little drag isn't starting on one, the main snare drum is one, I'm leading into the beat one, one. So make sure you fill that downbeat, the snare drum on beat one with the bass drum as beat one. So we get one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then halfway through the second bar, um, Fred comes in with the um, drum beat. And I, I, I was able to listen very carefully and hear the first, uh, the right symbol pattern for the first one, two, three, four, five, five bars. And you're gonna hear in this example how much he vary, uh, how much of a, how much he varies it, how many variations we get. I'm not 100% sure with the bass drum, that high effort, I'm just feeling, because you do hear it later in the song very clearly in parts, it's just it's just a thing that a drummer would do back in those days. He, he, he surely must be playing the um, hi-hats on two and four, although they're very hard to hear. But you can, what I'm really focusing on is what the ride cymbal is doing. So you can play those variations with the bass drum and the high effort we talked about at the beginning of the lesson. It's, a, it's the ride cymbal I'm focusing on. So for the first, for the second bar, starting on beat four, one, two, three, four, and one. So we get this first swing section. The next line, bar one, we get one and two and three, four and one. So a variation there, not quite the full shuffle, not quite the jazz, the second version of the drum beat I showed you. Bar, bar two there, one, two and three and four and one. Next line, we get an example of just the quarter notes being played. One, two, three, four and one. And then the last bar, one, two, three, and four, and one. So loads of variations there, coming in with the shuffle part, the, the pickup note in different places. If we play it all together, you can hear, if you just focus on the, what the right symbol's doing, you can hear all those variations. So we get the intro, drum fill. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. See, I messed it up already. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. A bit faster. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. And let me play for you those three lines up to speed. Here we go. So at 1 minute 26, we get our little band stab section where we get the, the, uh, the band play these stabs. First one simply comes down with the snare drum and bass drum. One, two, three, four. Same for the second bar. One, two, three, four. Third bar, we get a little drag preceding it. One, two, three, four. And a snare drum and bass drum also on beat three. One, two, three, four. Excuse me. And then the fourth bar, we get a drag leading to beat one. One, two, three, so all four beats are being played. One, two, three, and then beat four. It's not quite a, um, a drag leading into beat four. It's more of a buzz. It's, it sounds more like a buzz stroke. So I've written it as a buzz. I play it right, buzzing with my right and accenting with the left. So I'm just basically pushing down harder with the right stick, uh, wherever hand you buzz with, um, into the snare drum to create that sound rather than two notes I'm creating multiple notes and that sounds more like the recording so we get one two three four one two three can you hear that difference between the drag at the beginning um, and the buzz at the end that sort of creates that sound that i'm hearing on the recording again it's very hard to hear exactly so four bars together 
And there's an example of where I was talking about earlier on where the bass drum continues with all four, four on the floor, a feather in the bass drum, because he's just come out that drum floor where he's done that. Anyway, let me play those four bars up to speed for you. Just a few seconds later, at 1 minute 42, we got our, our next set of bad stabs. They're very, very similar, it's just where the drags are. So we get one for the first bar. Second bar has the drag at the beginning this time. One, two, three, four. Bar three has the drags around the other way. One, two, three, four. So the drags go into beat three. And then beat four is the same as our previous example. One, two, three, four. With that drag, with that buzz at the end. And just for uh, complete sake, let's uh, hear those four bars up to speed as well. So that 2 minute 32 we got our outro, very very simple little um, outro part. Um, the bar, uh, first bar really is, is, is the groove leading into the outro part. It's uh, 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, he's shuffling all the way through there from beat 2. And then bar 2 we get 1 and 2, and that 2 is slightly more accented by the way. 1 and 2, more of a rim shot, 1 and 2 and and the bass drum and right symbol on the and of beat two. The only time I really hear a bass drum falling on any of those ands. One and two and three. And then on beat four, which is kind of cool, um, he plays, well, he, he clicks his sticks on beat four with the bass drum. So we get one and two and three and four. Bass drum and, and, clicked, cross, uh, and clicked sticks. And then finally, it's not really important, definitely improvised, but it's on the recording. So I tried to make it uh, to work out where it is in time. I'm sure Fred was feeling it in time, but it was like it's just improvised thing, not meant to be really part of the song. But he steps the hi hat on the and of beat one, one and two and three, and that's the last part of the drums you hear. So those three bars together. So if I can get this, one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three. One, two and three and four and one and two and three. Four and one and two. And let me now play for you that up to speed. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this lesson. Again, the link is beneath this video. And then while you're over at my website, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for £97 is a full year's online access to over 600 full video song lessons where, unlike this lesson, I teach you the song from start to finish. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart covering every single bar of the song. And like I said, I've got over 600 famous and popular songs up on the website already. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more little videos teaching you many, many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I've learned from my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, then feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.